humanity. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, today, in the mighty name of Jesus, as we enter into this time of sharing and sharing your word, I pray, Father, that you will reveal to our hearts what it is that you have for us, that we would be found in your perfect will, and that we would go forth doing what you have for us to do. Amen. 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 We, as people of the church, Christian people, you and I, per se, now, we can look back at our lives and we see, most of you can see where you've come from, the mistakes that you've made, and the things that you, if you had it to do over again, would do differently. Amen. Amen. I know I would. Amen. If you had your given time to this day to be able to go back and do it all over again, knowing what you do now, having what you have now, oh, it would be so different. We wouldn't make those mistakes. Amen. Hallelujah. I got to have a little volume. I'm, I'm okay. Just uh, just uh, adjust that back there so I don't have to. Because it has to go on that, that video. So, early in our lives, as we entered into a church situation, the majority of you, uh, some of you probably didn't grow up in the church, and most did. We knew the old songs, and we sang the old songs, and we learned the old-fashioned way, the old-fashioned Pentecostal way. I remember being in A.A. Allen's meetings, in particular up north in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Baltimore, Maryland, perhaps, uh, again, maybe in Pittsburgh or some of those places, under the big, huge tent. And then they had the sawdust, the sawdust to the floors. And, and I remember them uh, getting out and taking songs like we heard today. And I remember them starting to sing it. And they'd stand and they'd clap and they'd clap and they'd clap and clap and clap. And my hands got so sore. And then that man would come out and he'd start talking about how demons can affect your life. And it scared me to death. Now there... <laughs> The only place I could go was whenever that started up was race out. They had all the porta potties out there. <laughs> I found safety and solitude in the porta potties outside the AI healing and tent revivals. And so, uh, basically, what I saw myself doing as I thought about it today, I found myself like you find yourself sometimes running from God. Running from God because you can't be near where the heat truly is. You, you don't want to be there because, well, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm afraid it might affect me and cause me to want to change my life. Or the Holy Spirit would want my life to be changed and I'd have to recognize that that indeed is what God wants for me. Amen. That is us. That is what we do. There are times whenever we have, in times past, whenever we've had certain ministries come into the church or whatever, people would not come because of what was going to be said and how ministry was going to go. Because I perceived their hearts were not in the right place with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And that is the way that it is. Because whenever Christ is in your heart and life, the Word teaches us and it's very clear. It says, I can do all things through Christ. Right. He teaches us that He takes us in the high road sometimes. He takes us in the low road sometimes and Amen. into the middle ground. Amen. And the fact is that He has placed you there for a strategic place, a location, and reason for your life. Amen. In order that your entire life be given over unto Him, and as you work for Him, you bring others to the gospel. Yes. That's what it's all about. That's right. I don't know if any of you saw Vaughn Clark's posting on Facebook this past week. And what it was, was it appeared to be a giant hole. Just a giant hole. And it, all around that hole, almost like an anthill, there were, if you look close, there were human bodies. They were walking up and just falling into that hole. Falling into that hole. Falling into that hole. Falling into that hole. Into that hole. And it was almost as if it were a perpetual motion machine. Now, the fact is that there is life and breath of life, and there is death. Okay? And after death, there is no more that you can do for what you have already done. That's right. Right. Amen. So what we must do, while we're cognizant 
and have the effective ability to make choices and decisions and being spirit-led men and women of God, we declare our allegiance to God the Father in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, separates us from all sin. Amen. We become a new man. We become a new woman. We become, become a, new, a new creation. Right. And so uh, I begin to think about those things. And frankly, because of the age that I am, I begin to think of all the lost years. And then I felt like, and I say that I believe the Lord spoke to me and began to cause me to know that with the time that I have left, I had better turn the boat that I'm on. The ship that I'm piloting, piloting, the captain of whatever that ship is, and if that ship is so big that it can't turn fast, you better start doing what you can because I'm going to tell you something. If you look around in our world today, we are in a mess. Yeah. If you don't know it, today they talk about Brexit and they're having riots over there. In Hong Kong, the streets are on fire because of this group is against this group. And what you're going to begin to see is it's a life and death matter and it is 50% here and 50% there clashing. It's the war of the world. It's good and bad. It's human nature against the nature of God. And what I want us to begin to do, if you haven't done it already, or if you hear my voice today, I want you to pledge your allegiance all over brand new to God the Father in the name of Jesus. Amen. The power of the Holy Amen. Spirit will set you free. And if there is sin in your life, He will forgive your sin. Amen. And the Word says He will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Amen. 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 That is what it's all about. And once that happens, then the Lord begins to reveal to you some things. And I want to try to read this to you real quick because I begin to see things in and around the world that we have far passed. But I want you to see it now. Back, oh, many, many years ago when we began Eagles Fight Ministries and we wrote a description of the vision for the ministry. I want to read you what was written. It is the vision for this ministry. This is concerning Eagles Fight Ministries. It is the vision for this ministry to be a spearheader concerning the things of the Lord in the latter days. Eagles Fight Ministry is a safe place for healing and restoration. The ministry staff is trained to provide much care for those who have been wounded by the enemy and who are in need of restoration and strength. While we do not claim to have all the answers for all of the problems, we serve a God who does. It is our heartfelt desire to lift up high the banner of the Lord as we faithfully serve Him. And then I'm not going to read it this morning, but what we have is we actually have the ministry statement concerning Eagles Fight Ministry. Amen. That we are reaching the world for Christ. That's what our motto is. Reaching the world for Christ. Some of us reach the world for Waycross. Some of us reach the world for Pierce County. Blackshire. Some of us reach the world for Bacon County. Some of us reach the world for farther thrusting or outreaching type areas. And through it all, we all come together with the vision that reaches the world for Christ. Amen. I mentioned earlier we were talking about the things that we're looking ahead to do. We have been heavily at, involved in Africa, Western Africa. Bishop John Adjow has been handling things over there. There's a lot of Eagles Fight Ministries over there. I do not even have the ability to give a number. It was four or five hundred churches. And he traveled extensively. We supported him. And then also, uh, we've got Pastor John, by the way, who was headed over to West Alabama and then to uh, Atlanta, Georgia. We want to remember me. We want to remember Audrey Mark. She's in the hospital. Just got a message. She's in the hospital. She said, uh, uh, pray for me. And I told her, we're going to pray. So let's do that right now. Lord, for Audrey Martin in the hospital here in Wake Forest, Georgia, we speak the release of your healing flow and anointing to her in your name. Amen. 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 And we'll find out a little bit later what that's about and what needs to be done. We spent many, many years in Venezuela. We spent many, many years in Brazil. We've spent numerous years now in uh, in Peru, and we've been into Trinidad with mission teams, and we have gone, I have gone into uh, Chile. Some of you have been into Honduras, and yes, we've been in those places, 
And we're going to continue to pray for those places. But you know what? We can't all go. And we can't have that. Uh, we don't have that amount of money where we can continue and continue. But the Lord is going to make a way. Amen. 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 And I, my, my perception of my ministry that I must begin to do, and I've already shared with you, is to begin to travel to the places to solidify the ministry of Eagle's Flight Ministries in order for our purpose to continue. Amen? Amen? You have to understand that when we start out, we can't just quit. We have to continue on. Yeah. And the time eventually perhaps will come when, and I say that, that I step out of the, the pastorate here and, and uh, Jim will be stepping in. And, and at that time that I can be able to go here and there. And some of you will go here and there. And what we're doing is we're spreading the word of the Lord according to what God has given to me for Eagle Fly Ministries. Amen. I'm going into Chile because there's a couple things that they need to learn. They're going to need to learn how to pray. And they're going to need to learn how to begin to speak out and declare the things that are not as though they were. And the door has uh, been thrown wide open and they're very excited, uh, frankly, about me returning and bringing a team that will support me as I minister. And then I release you in ministry as I have done. Amen. 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 I will be the predominant speaker. I will be the one that handles things. Those that go will be the ones that pray for people and minister on the downsides. Amen. Amen. Because it's what God has given us to do. Amen. So we're looking forward to that because what that's going to do is that's going to spread the word into Argentina, into Paraguay, into Uruguay. And uh, John has been asking uh, numerous times if, if we will please, please go to Colombia. And that hasn't come about yet. And I understand some of this is foreign to some people, but the fact is, uh, some have not been called to do that. Mm -hmm. Some have been called to stay with the stuff, is what we say. Barbara has been called to India. She will be going to India in January and February. We will be going into, again, Chile and South America, probably about mid-January, only for a short time. But what we do is we capitalize on the time that we have, and they're preparing, and they're fasting, and they are praying. Last trip we made to Peru, I wanted to try one of the things like the Lord spoke to me, and we went into a, a venue and had a, uh, a service, and we did just as I felt like the Lord had given me to do it, and it was very successful. And the people there said they had prayed for and fasted for, I don't know how long it was, 40 days. Or anybody remember what it was? 20-something days. 20 20-something days. And the power of God fell and the Spirit of the Lord was there and it opened things up. So, so it's, it's a marvelous thing. Now, I, I understand we're not as vocal as they are. Now, they get really excited. Oh, man, that's wild. <laughs> and sometimes we do it, sometimes we don't. But I want you to know... <laughs> Anytime we hear about the goodness of God in the land of the living, we need to begin to be vocal. Everything He's done for us, we praise you, Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And sometimes we say, well, you know, I, I just thought like that. But that's a lie. See, that's the lie. Again. You are like that. We'll tell you what, if Jesus Christ himself walked through the doors and came down here, you'd be jumping and shouting just like they were a days of old when he walked the streets in Jerusalem. Why? Because we want to be like him. We want to be near him. We want to be his servant. Don't tell me you just sit there like you do sometimes now. Well, I'm tired. I'm going to tell you what. If you turn your eyes away from your own bad self, you won't worry about those things. That's right. When you get your mind off of your own pain and, oh, oh i got a sore back, i got a headache or whatever. I'm going to tell you what, start praying for somebody else. Amen. 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 And begin to pray for somebody else that you know that has a problem. you got a tooth problem, start praying for somebody else. Amen. Amen. And what's going to begin to happen is you'll see the power of might of God well up within you and do what needs to be done. And Amen. He'll heal you while you're praying for them. Amen. 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 That's the way that it is. I didn't invent that. I didn't make that up. And so I began to uh, say, Lord, what is it that you would have us to do? And, and what I see is many, many people within this facility even now beginning to return to the vision that God has given to us for Eagles Fight Ministry. There's three things in that vision. Let me tell you what they are. 
Number one is we're going to be back to winning the loss. Amen. Amen. What's the most important thing for us to do in the world? What's the most important thing for you as a Christian to do? Is to win someone to Jesus Christ. Amen. To save them from literally a literal fiery burning hell. Amen. The second thing is we're going to be back to speaking life instead of death. Amen. I want to congratulate Debbie Joyner, Pastor Debbie, for this past Wednesday. How she spoke an absolutely marvelous message. About the power of life and death. I sat there and I told Beverly the whole time. I said, she's been listening for 20 years. She's been listening. <laughs> and I've always told you what comes in comes out. Amen. What goes in comes out. And when you can stand in front of a group of people and begin to declare the things that God has given to you. You'll see his hand in your life and you will know that you're where you're supposed to be. Yes, amen. He will make a platform for you. And what God did through you was a marvelous thing because it showed where your heart was. Amen. 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 I hope you can go to Chile. I don't want you to get out there and preach. You're not going to do that. What I want you to do is I want you to get down there and minister the word that's in you. And that's what we're going to do. Amen. Amen. Because that's where we are. And that's what we've been given to do. We're not going to forget about Peru. I want to very quickly begin our ministry that I shared with you concerning having at least one of our services per month being translated. And that means everything that I say now will be translated and it will take twice as long. <laughs> and so we're looking forward to doing that and, and moving into some other areas. We're going to be cranking up our counseling area again. And uh, we'll, we're going to learn a little bit more about that in the next two weeks ahead. So we're going to be seeing some different things because there are many people who need counseling services and Christian counseling. Yes. Amen. Amen. We used to do that. Well, why did you stop? Well, yeah, I just got tired. Well, I want to tell you something. The devil doesn't get tired. Right. Amen. Amen. We're on a mission. You remember the Blues Brothers? We're on a mission from God. <laughs> and that's us. We are on a mission from God. And the third thing, we're going to be back to raising up ministers and training them. It used to be that I would wonder and worry a lot about going somewhere and having to do this. Who are we going to get to be able to come in and lead in the service? Well, I'm here to tell you that we've got people with the word in them. Yeah. And they can't share that word because I'm sharing the word. Yeah. So what I do is I step out of the way and somebody else can step in. I uh, love we've got we've got Jim there, we've got Debbie there, Pastor Beverly, we've got Tom there, we've got Barbara there, we got who else here? And there's somebody I'm missing that's in here. David Johnson back there. Uh, no, there's somebody else. John Powell, of course, or whatever. But I begin to look and see how that applies to our ministry. You know, you had you heard that saying, birds of a feather flock together. Amen. Amen. We, we can stop this service right now and say, okay, we're, we're going to stop the service now, but we're going to hang around for a few more minutes. And, and what's going to happen is there's going to be uh, some birds of a feather get together over here. There's going to be some sparrows back here, some crows here, some uh, hawks over here, some eagles back there. Oh, and there are vultures right over there. In the yellow hat area. <laughs> What we see is, is we go there because we can express ourselves and we feel comfortable. And what I have found is people in the arena where we are have begun to feel comfortable about ministry. I've had so many people come and say, Pastor Randy, I, I feel like the Lord has given me a word for the church. We had Mike Watts was another one. And uh, uh, things, things of that nature. And, and what we see is we have people who have the ability and can allow different people to move in and minister and do different things. I'm so thankful for that because it wasn't something that I chose, but it was something that God gave. Amen. Amen. And what I have done, and you correct me if I'm wrong, I have effectively, I believe, released you to have aspects or opportunity to minister a Holy Ghost power-packed word as the Lord gives it to you. Amen. We're not interested in somebody walking in here and coming up here and giving the word of the Lord from a sermon that they preached 30 years ago and they got some success back there. We're not interested in that. I'm interested in a fresh or a cutting word Amen. from God. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Now, I, I have a lot of notes in everything and I wrote a lot of things down. Um, 
And that's, well, that's all I have. And, and the reason why is because I did study all those other notes. But this is where we are today because this is what the Lord gave. And it says, I look excitedly forward to the near and far future. Okay, I'm going to stop there. That's it. Now, for the next minute or two, you know, again, from the heart, because it's what the Lord put into me. My heart's desire is to see everyone in this facility and those that will come. And those next door. To begin to step into the arena of sharing the word of the Lord from their hearts. Oh, I, I've provided notebooks for you to take notes down on protocol. I want us to follow that. By the way, if you see that you can't be here, please let one of the ministerial staff know because we worry. I was worried about Audrey and somebody came and told me that she'd send a note, sure enough. Because we worry about you. We really do. And why? Because we're shepherds. You're yes. sheep. Right. Do we need to leave the 99 to go find the one? Yes, yes we do. And the way we do that is by you texting us. <laughs> <laughs> and when we don't get that text or that phone call or whatever, uh, we become concerned. Derek has had to work on Sunday mornings, but he's here on Wednesday evening. Yeah. And others, there's some things that are taking place. Joey Mixon went to work, worked all day yesterday. Glory to God. Amen. 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 I went and had to go and pick him up. Ball game was coming on. I wanted to watch it. And he got off at the same time. I was thinking, Mm -hmm. Anyhow, but I went over there and he came out that door like this. <laughs> he worked and then they told him to come back at 9 o'clock today. Yeah. Yeah. And he's faithful to do that. As long as he's faithful, the Lord's going to bless him. Yeah. Amen. 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 We're going to continue to uplift each one of you. Amen. No matter what your needs are. And if we can help you, we'll help you. But don't sit back and anticipate that we're going to read your mind. That's we're right. We're going to do that. That's Amen. right. If you have need of something, you come and say, I have need of this, and we'll deal with it. Yeah. Amen. I want our church to function whether I'm around, whether Beverly's around, whether Debbie's around, whether Martha's around, <laughs> Princess. I want us to just keep on ticking. Yeah. Amen. And if you see a place that's amiss, handle it. Amen. Just handle it. That's right. Yeah. The Lord has much for us to do. Mushamas, much more. Amen. He has a lot for us to do. I believe that when the time comes that we have need of additional room spaces, Sunday school rooms, kitchen, etc. I believe that the Lord will provide. Amen. It's going to be a timing thing. And if you watch the timing of the Lord, you'll see that it will be a perfect thing. Amen. It won't be something that man has to concoct. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm sharing these things with you, and it's one of those things that I'm about to close and say, he that has ears to hear, let him hear. Amen. We want you in ministry. We want you teaching classes. We want you to bring people. We want you to go and you know trips and do this and that and the other, like we used to do while we still were able to grasp vision because we care. Amen. Amen. And what I want us to do is to begin in our hearts. Maybe you're going to have to look back at some of the old songs and some of the old ways that we just shot away from and left. Maybe we're going to have to get back to lifting our hands in the presence of the Lord. Amen. 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 Maybe we're going to have to come to that place where we just say glory to God. Amen. Maybe we're going to have to get you back to that place where if the Lord so empowers you to do so that you run around the church. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Maybe you're going to get back to that place where you get up and you walk over and you minister to somebody. Amen. And you have your person there to make sure that everything is decently in order. Amen. And when we begin to see that, we're going to begin to see the might and power of the eternal God. We will see <laughs> people that are healed when they walk in the door. Amen. You will begin to hear again more and more. When I walked through the door of that place, I felt the presence of the Lord. Amen. It was just as if a curtain was over me. I walked through a curtain and there was the peace of God and I felt it in my heart. You'll hear it again. 
You're going to see things such as you going up and laying hands on someone and then just falling out of the Holy Spirit. I don't know if y'all saw my post that I put up about the kitty. Uh, if you did just take that with a grain of salt. So we go back and look at the Facebook page and, and see. But what we'll see is the presence of God and God being exalted and where you Myself, him, her, they, them do not take the credit. Right. Right. Yeah. We submit ourselves to God and say, Lord, here I am. Would you take me and use me? I want to get up in the morning and, and I want to be uh, revived by the presence of your Holy Spirit in my life. I want to be able to, to go forth and do good. Amen. I want to I want to find the place where you have me to go. I want to follow Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 where as I trusted you with all of my heart. You direct my steps. Amen. I don't have to worry about it. And then because I'm following a higher call. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps others are not. So Heavenly Father, right now, in the mighty name of your Son Christ, here in this house today, we lift our hands and our hearts before you. We thank you, Lord, that you're reviving our spirits and renewing our hearts and renewing our vision. I'm asking you, Lord, for the ability to have the fire of God shut up in our bones. I'm asking you, Heavenly Father, for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to be released upon men and women and them to speak in other tongues. And begin to pray for others and begin to see their families turned around and health and healing coming and, and a raising up of those that we all gather together in one place and one accord. And we begin to see what it is that you have for us in this latter day. I thank you for that, Lord. And I realize that it has to start first in our hearts. And so, Lord, today in this house, I invite you into my heart in such a way that I'm forgiven for anything. That has been sinful. Yes, and then I pray, Father, for those that I'm around that surround me here in my home and then into this house. I pray, Father, that you will heal us collectively. Yes. That you will get fire within us yes. and we would go forth Amen. and do yes. your yes. will. Yes. And I praise your name, Lord. Yes. And I pray, Heavenly Father, I pray, Heavenly Father, that when the time comes for us to return to Jerusalem, you'll send us. Mm -hmm. I'm asking for that specifically. Yes, yes. And Lord, as we get ready to go our separate ways, fill us with your spirit and bring us together again. Comfort that family in need in Blackshear. Linda Jones and her family. Mm -hmm. If you're here today and there's something in your heart and life that need to be there, just take this moment to ask the Lord to forgive you. Mm -hmm. If you're watching the little broadcast, just simply... Lift your hand before the Lord and say, Father, forgive me. Come into my heart. I know I need you and I want to serve you. Hallelujah. He'll do it. Angels in heaven will rejoice. Amen. Eagles Flight Ministries is here at 355 East Blackshire and in Waycross, Georgia. Sunday mornings at 1030. We come together for prayer at 10 o'clock and then again Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock. First of the month we have a missions prayer service. And that's at 6 o'clock, first Sunday of the month. We're getting ready to leave you now, but I'm going to say this to you as we go. And get ready for the music back there. Be blessed and may Jesus be your peace. Amen. 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 Amen.